Hey everybody, welcome to episode 122 of the Ask Dap Show, where I answer your Volkswagen and Audi questions. On this episode, we talk about which intercooler is the best, TTRS fuel pumps, and how long it take me to install springs on an S4. Jesse via YouTube says, what is the reason for using the TTRS fuel pump? Is there something special about it or you just happen to have it on hand? Okay, so this question from Jesse was related to uh, TTRS fuel pumps. We actually just shot uh, another episode of our Project Mark 5 build. We will have another one coming uh, this Thursday for that vehicle. And that uh, TTRS fuel pump is not something that we just had laying around. It is something that is a common modification for people who are looking to upgrade their turbo on uh, 2.0 T TSI and FSI engines because it allows you uh, more fuel flow. So there is kind of also a choke point of the fuel pump control module. We've covered that before in the PM3. We will have another video coming soon about uh, a PM4, which is a new module to allow more flow for that fuel pump in addition because up, you can't just upgrade the fuel pump, you actually have to upgrade the control module in addition to that to make all that work together. So we'll have more details coming about that soon, so make sure you look out for a video in regards to that. But it was uh, specifically for a purpose. I know, I think Max didn't mention that specifically, kind of uh, made the assumption kind of people knew what, what it was for. It is uh, a higher flow fuel pump than the factory one. Michael Love via email says, no speedometer, RPM, or fuel gauge. Did get a 705 improper transmission input on a Bosch reader. Does that sound like a speed sensor? Also, it spits on initial acceleration. Any common problems that I should look for? What reader do you recommend? Okay, so this question was sent to us via email. This was on a 99 Beetle 2 liter. Um, those Mark IV models had the either an AG4 or potentially an O2J trans. Uh, that car Basically they had speed sensors on there. I think they had two separate ones for the differential and then they had a vehicle speed sensor that would send the signal to the, to the instrument cluster and then a separate one that would send it to the transmission control module on those cars uh, of the vehicles that had it or an ECU one. Um, those sensors sometimes do go bad, but they're also mechanically driven. So it's an electronic sensor, but it has a mechanical drive that actually determines what's going on. I've heard of the shaft of that drive actually breaking or potentially a sensor problem. But what you can do is use a scan tool. I know you were talking about a, a Bosch scan tool, I'm not familiar with that specifically, but you can use a scan tool like an OBD11 or a Vagcom to go into the um, the signals from the sensors, you can drive the car, to, and if you were using OBD11, again, which we'll link to in the description, you can use live data to determine which sensor is reading properly or improperly. It's also gonna give you a specific sensor number, which is gonna be a G number, G whatever, um, and that is determines which sensor is actually bad. So uh, more specific scan tools that are less generic, like a Bosch one, uh, will give you the information you need. And again, OBD11 or VAGCOM is really what you're gonna be looking for because they're gonna give you specific information for VW and Audi vehicles as opposed to more generic codes. One drink but no more via YouTube says, very well explained S4 spring install. Subscribed. Out of curiosity and not including the camera setup, how much time did it take you to do the front and then back? Okay, so timing on the S4 springs. Uh, yes, thank you, appreciate the feedback on the S4 uh, DIY. Uh, that is not a super easy job. It's a much more challenging spring install than some of the other VW and Audi models, or really Volkswagen models tend to have easier springs than Audi models because most Audi models will have kind of that four link setup that you saw in that car. Um, that job, so I actually didn't do the other side. I didn't do both sides and I only did the side that I shot the video on. Uh, I, we're at DAP Repair, our, sh our new shop. Uh, the tech here actually did the other side, the, the passenger side of the vehicle, and then I came in uh, once that was done, and once I was able to get here and had some time to break away, I came and shot the DIY on the driver side. You know, So I don't have any details about specific timing. Also, I never really have a good gauge for that because whenever we're shooting a video, it's gonna be DIY related, so we don't really have a good gauge for how long it takes without shooting video because we're actually shooting video, so we have to make sure we get the angles and the shots and blah, 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 blah. Um, I did look up book time on that, um, and as per all data, that spring install on a BAS4 is 6.5 hours. Um, so, you know, it is no short job, even if you just base it on book time, and that's what professionals would be charging, not what I would expect an amateur 
or a novice kind of DIYer person to take, I would expect a DIYer to take quite a while with a, a spring install on an S4. So just uh, hopefully that it at least gives a little bit of insight there. I don't have a feedback, but more importantly, part of the reason why we do DIYs and why I like to kind of put that information out there is we get a lot of questions from people that are that are saying, hey, how hard is that? And for me, there's nothing better we can do than here's a DIY, it shows you how to do it. You can determine what your skill set is and, and what your skill level is to, to determine how comfortable you are with that job. So uh, the, for me, there's nothing better than showing you how to do it and then you can make the determination whether you feel like it's something you should do or shouldn't do. But again, book time, 6.5 hours, I would expect uh, even a professional, their first time doing a job might take seven, seven hours, um, six to seven hours. And, but, you know, uh, obviously somebody who's more experienced would take less time. YouTube Rage via YouTube says, okay, so intercoolers are very useful after upping the boost. Now the big question, which intercooler should we go with? Can any aftermarket intercooler work? APR, for example, sells theirs for a whopping $1,000. Is this intercooler really twice as better than the competitors that are hundreds less? Okay, so intercoolers. Uh, this comment was left on a video that I shot talking about how intercoolers work and the benefits and positives of, of upgrading them, which I'll link to uh, in the description where you can check that video out if you have any interest. Um, are there differences in intercoolers? Yes, uh, certainly there are. And the question is, is, are they worth it? So. This gets really dicey, um, mostly because no one has really put together comparisons comparing X, Y, and Z intercooler and, and comparing, let's say, a you know an eBay intercooler upgrade to a uh, middle-of-the-road intercooler upgrade to a high-end intercooler upgrade. But I can tell you this. The biggest thing you'll find in difference in intercoolers is core quality, the, the intercooler core itself. Because there's a huge disparity in quality of those cores. And so with the low end intercoolers, you're either gonna find a tube and fin core, and that's gonna be probably your cheapest core. They're cheap to manufacture, they flow well, but they don't cool nearly as efficiently. Um, and then at the higher end, you're gonna find all bar and plate stuff. Now, even that gets dicey because there's different, even if you compare all bar and plate intercoolers, there's different quality in the bar and plate design. The, the design itself doesn't determine that it's a great quality just being bar and plate, there are different disparities in quality with that as well. Now then, then even furthermore goes to end tank design uh, and, and the R&D that went into it. So the, the problem you run into with a question like this is I haven't tested them all side by side to say this one is definitively better than that one and this one is definitively better than this one. What I can say is that there's certainly a difference between the top range and the bottom range and there's gonna be some variation between the top and the middle the question is, is, is it feel like it's worth it enough? And the problem that a lot, oftentimes you'll see is, is a lot of information quoted on pressure drop and um, pressure drop and, and different temperature differentials between it. And the testing done is usually only on one core and you're comparing apples to oranges because the testing was done in a different way or in a different climate or in different conditions. All that stuff gets really hard. What I always recommend is go with a quality one. The ones that we offer that I recommend would be um, Unitronic, racing line and uh integrated those are the three that that i would recommend uh the unitronic one is solid quality and is going to be the cheapest of those and then the the ie one and the racing line one i know the racing line one they talked about having like super premium quality like uh they were having like a military grade company do some of their r d on their cores uh and then ie also has a design of their end tanks called fds that, that has some flow characteristics to try to get as much of the flow up to the top of the inner core to utilize the efficiency of the top of the core because of sometimes the way the end tank designs flow, uh, you don't get uh, maximum efficiency because the flow goes through the most of the bottom of the core instead of hitting the top. So um, cool design. We actually just did an IE inner cooler install uh, last week here at the shop for a customer. Um, but again, in a, those, those would be the three I recommend. Would I think APRs is gonna be solid quality? Yes, and again, much like what I would expect IE and Racing Line and Unitronic, they've done R&D, whereas when you go to the bottom, the cheapest eBay intercoolers, they have no R&D. They copied somebody else's product and, and did it as cheaply as they possibly could, uh, which is why you know that's not going to be the best quality product and gonna get you the best outcome, uh, even though it would be the best price. Thanks so much for watching episode 122 of the Ask Dap Show, where I answer your 
Volkswagen and Audi questions. If you have any questions or comments about the questions answered in this show, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below.